the truth is that no one had done a lot of the things that he had done before. And the Patriots have made a living off of not betting on things that haven't happened before. Albert Breer of Monday Morning Quarterback is with us to preview Sunday night's game with the Patriots and Buccaneers. Albert, great to have you back on the show, man. Hope you're doing well. I'm good. How are you guys doing? We, great. We are excellent. Give us just your, your straight expectations for Sunday night, setting the stage for what should be a great atmosphere and great fanfare as we sit at home here in Nashville and watch. Um, for someone who has covered the Patriots for years mm-hmm. and, and now covers this league nationally, what are you expecting for Sunday night? It's hard. It's almost hard to know what to expect just because like, I don't know that there's a great precedent for this. The closest thing I guess would be Favre going back into Lambeau. Um, and that was different for a number of reasons. Um, you know, I, I like there isn't the six championships there. I don't think there's as strong a connection to the coach. Now, of course, uh, you know, Brett had played for Mike McCarthy, but it wasn't for anywhere near the length of time that um, Brady played for Belichick and, you know, and then on the other hand, you know, Favre was going on, going, coming in as a member of the arch rival where that's not happening here. So um, I think it's going to be an intense environment. That's what I would expect. Um, probably a playoff like atmosphere. And um, I will say this, like, you know, I grew up here and um, you know, I, like I spent most of my life here. I don't know anyone here who didn't spend last January and February rooting for the Buccaneers. Um, I'd be surprised if you can even hear a single boo in that place, you know, now maybe if there's somebody next to you who uh, had a little too much fun in the parking lot, you know, maybe you'll hear it if you're, you're sitting in section 323 and there's somebody sitting right next to you who uh, it has some sort of grudge. But uh, if you're watching on TV, I think, you know, what you're going to hear is probably an overwhelmingly positive uh, response to Brady coming home. People had plenty of time to get ready to the idea for the idea of him leaving in that last mm-hmm. season, knowing he wasn't going to be franchise tagged and that was part of his deal and, and all of that. So there wasn't anything like uh, sudden ab- about his departure. That leads to a great deal of warmth. How do you think the Patriots officially handle all of this introduction, pregame, uh, video the moment he passes uh, passes the all time record. You know, I I know this. Um, you know, the guy who like owns the building isn't Belichick; it's Kraft, and uh, I think Kraft very much values his relationship with Brady, and he wants that to be a good relationship, not just with him personally, but with his family. Um, you know, when Brady is done playing, and you know, certainly. I, you know, there'll be a statue of Brady outside the stadium and all of that. So um, I, my, my, my feeling would be that the Kraft family will probably do everything they can within the parameters of, you know, Bill Belichick and his team's effort to win the football game to honor Brady and to welcome Brady back. And so um, it wouldn't surprise me if there's some sort of video on the video board, um, if they stop the game, um, you know, when he, when he passes uh, Drew Brees, on the all-time passing list. Um, and you know what, honestly, Paul, you know what's funny about it is like for all this time, I've sort of thought like that Bill might push back against that. But like the more I think about it, the closer we get to game day, I sort of wonder like, is Bill going to want to turn Brady's emotions around on him? And so, <laughs> you know, in a funny sort of way, like maybe Belichick would be for this because he wants like the emotions to kind of maybe get the best of Brady a little bit. So uh, you know, maybe he isn't a hundred percent locked in on the game. Uh, there'll be interesting just to see the way that they handle it. Um, but I do think that like, there's going to be some things during the game to honor Brady and acknowledge his time in new England. Albert Breer, our guest Monday morning quarterback, Albert, everything is about precedent with the new England Patriots. What precedent were they trying to set or setting in, in Brady's situation? And how did it lead to his departure? Because in the 24-hour news cycle, a lot can be lost over the last couple of years. Take us back to what actually led to his departure. Sure. Well, I, I think the first precedent is um, the fact that there was no precedent for what Brady's done, you know. And, um, you know, I think that that was sort of at the b- backdrop of everything that, um, you know, as Brady got to like sort of each milestone from an age standpoint, he was doing things that had never been done before. And, um, you know, it's – 
like you hear Bill say, well, if anybody can do it, Tom can do it. Um, but like the truth is that no one had done a lot of the things that he had done before. And the Patriots have made a living off of not betting on things that haven't happened before, you know? So, um, you know, I think that's sort of why um, the split sort of, but I think that's at the root of some of the issues um, drafting Garoppolo in 2014, Belichick coming out and publicly saying, um, you know, that Brady's contract and age played into it. I don't think Brady, you know, I don't think that's very well received by Brady. Um, you know, and then I, I think in, in, in 2016, sort of the back and forth that happened during Deflategate, I'm not sure Brady really felt like the team had his back all the way on that. Um, that leads to in 17, um, you know, going into the final year of Garoppolo's contract, um, things sort of getting worse between he and Belichick. So that's sort of the background. They're able to patch it, patch things up for 2018. They win a Super Bowl. I think that extends it for another year. Um, and you know, really like before the 19 season, you know, really to me, like where this stood and it's understandable from both sides. I don't think. I'll put it this way. I know that the raw dollar figure wasn't the problem. The mm -hmm. contract offer the Patriots put in front of Brady to try and keep him with the team beyond 2019, the dollars were workable. It was the guarantees that were the problem. And Brady wanted the contract not to say you'll make X amount of dollars or be the highest paid quarterback in football or any of that. It was more so I want the contract to say I'm going to be the quarterback of the team for the next couple of years. And because of all of that stuff with precedent, you know, because there had been no precedent for somebody playing at this age, the Patriots didn't want to go there with guarantees. Brady's upset about that because Brady feels like he's deserves the chance to give it a shot to play to that age. And that the team sort of, after all the equity he's built up, um, owes him the chance to try and do that. And so that was sort of where the contract negotiation shifted from the team doing an extension with him to, Brady doing the sort of deal with the team that allowed for him to depart and gave him control over his own situation through having the no franchise tag clause in there. So I'm sorry for being long winded on it, but no, it. You know, I really think it did start in 2014 and it may have ended earlier if it weren't for the team winning championships along the way. And, you know, I didn't think then I think finally it gets to the point, you know, coming off of the 18 championship where, Brady feels like he's at least earned the, I would say the luxury of telling the Patriots when he's going to walk away and the Patriots insistence on saying, no, like we need control or when it's time to say goodbye to you was what hastened his departure.